I would much rather go out balling yeah. than coming up there and being kind of like worried about everything that's going on. And then when I get my opportunity, not take advantage of it. So mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily think about what's next, like you said, because But that's the reality. That's the reality. Um, but I would say going out, going out with how I want to go out is the ultimate goal. It's another one in the books, Beyond the Breaks. I'm T, got Brack to my side, got my man Victor in the humble abode. <laughs> No, but uh, today's episode, uh, we really want to delve into the uh, the free agent market and the paths that we took individually, because uh, that's the thing that's common amongst us all. All of us were three free agents at one point or another time in our life. So uh, I'll start with you first, Vic, because uh, you're fresh in it right now. You're in it right now as we speak. Um, what's that process like for the people that don't know? Uh... I would say the biggest thing about free agency that people don't realize is is the time that you spend away. You know, um, stability is one thing that the NFL, um, if you're not a superstar, is not a thing that is common for everybody. So just really that mental stability and that mental stamina goes a long way, I would say. Um, in that process because you got to be ready at all times you don't know when the number is going to be called or where it's going to be you just got to stay ready and stay focused and keep that mindset stay hungry because you know when your number is called you got to take advantage of that opportunity when you when you talk about being away I kind of elaborate on that because not everybody understands being away like yeah yeah for sure being away I would say okay so when you're on a team, you're in that city um, and you get accustomed to wherever that city is and you try to acclimate yourself into that lifestyle, um, whether that may be buying a house or um, buying or, or renting out. Um, but being away would be uh, wherever you're at when you get that call that they're releasing you. Um, that's that's what I would say that process is like, because then you go to wherever you're at off season. Um, you may stay in that city depending on your situation, mm -hmm. um, but that looks different for everybody. I would say uh, you got to take into account like some of these players have families, some of them don't, some of them are single guys. So um, being away looks different for everybody, and oh. you know that well, that process is so going. I know being in that situation, you yeah. know, we all know firsthand. And when you get that phone call, because mm -hmm. I know I used to get that feeling. Right. I always had that feeling. And uh, I would say my first time getting released when I was in Kansas City, it was a shock to me. More so the second time they released me was more of a shock. But then after that, like I felt it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I knew it. And when I when that phone, when I when I got that phone call, I just automatically knew when I just seen that number, I had that feeling. When I walked in the facility, I had that feeling. Did you ever have those feelings when those when the, that that phone call arrived or when when that person walked up to you, you know, to bring your playbook? Like, did you how how was that? That that's that's funny you say that because as a rookie. I was, you know, coming in, I was undrafted, mm -hmm. undrafted free agent. And, you know, when the odds are stacked against you, you kind of prepare for either way. Um, and when I got that, when I was expecting to get that call, not really expecting because I felt like I did well, but, you know, it's in the back of your mind, like, mm -hmm. look, this this might be anything, this, happen. anything could happen. So um, that process as a rookie, you know, wait until 1 o'clock when mm -hmm. they officially announced that 53 was was crazy and then actually you know the year that i was in buffalo where i actually was released that call it was it was almost the same thing it was almost that same feeling you kind of get yourself geared up for like hey anything could happen and when it happened it's like so much goes through your head like it's look, over it's yeah it's over it's like yo i did all this work like what's happening next mm -hmm. 
Um, but you know that that feeling is is serious. It's real for sure. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I, the one I think the thing that got me, because after after being, I got cut six times. Yeah. yeah. I, I was with six teams over the span of four years, mm-hmm. and um, I think the thing that stuck with me the most was when you get cut, yeah. and it it had and it's for a reason that's completely out of your control. I think the coldest one for me was I was at my third team in uh, in St. Louis at the time when the Rams were still there. So it's my birthday, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got cut on my birthday. Mm. I got wow. a call. I seen I seen that area code pop up on my phone. I'm like, I already know what time it is. So I didn't even answer. I just picked up my uh, playbook and I walked to the office. I was like, you called. And he was like, yeah, uh, we're going to let you go today. Uh, Spag want to talk to you. So Spagnolo calls me in the office. And um, I ended up respecting him for it because at least he, he, was, he was completely honest about the situation, which really put in perspective how you are as a free agent. You're, you're, you're a commodity and you're expendable. That's just, the, that's just the way the game goes. You're a number. And this dude told me, he said, so here's the thing. I think you got the talent to play in this at this level. Uh, I would like to try to resign you if we ever get into a depth issue. The problem is we need a D lineman, and I forgot who they ended up picking up. It was some guy that was a free agent, but they they needed a, they were short a guy on the D line. They needed him to act get activated, and because of uh, money, naturally, usually DBs and receivers and skill position guys because they're the most plentiful. Other positions, yeah, they'll be us. the first ones on yeah. the chopping board. Oh yeah. So he was like, so money wise, it just made most sense to cut you because you're on know, practice squad. He was like, not that I don't like you, that's just that's just the way the game goes. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I've been in a situation when I got cut. When I got cut with the Jets, bro, it was just the wildest thing because there was like. I remember going up there. I was only up there for a few months. I had a waiver, so I had to sign a waiver on my hamstring. I'm in there treating every morning, had my little earbuds in, just doing what I needed to do, right? It was hella DBs up there. You had Camardi up there. You had Revis, Revis up there, Coleman. I mean, man, you had Batman up there, bro. You had, bro, we had, like, literally, I was sharing reps in the third group, and I was averaging probably about, maybe six reps a total practice. That's team 101, 707, because I was sharing reps in the third group. And it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, this is crazy. But I was, I had production. I had numbers just with the minimal amount of reps that I had. And I remember um, walking in a facility one morning and my phone rang and I'm like, damn. Mm. I said, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I just knew the number. I didn't, I don't, I don't know the number, just an area code. And you just get that feeling. And I'm like, shoot. And this one the Jets had first built their facility. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I'm about to go get me some of this breakfast first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so I went to go get the breakfast. You know what I'm saying? I made my plate. Boom. They called me again. And I was like, yeah, I'm down here eating. They're like, you bring up your playbook. I said, all right, I'll be up there. Boom, right? I'm like, shoot, man. I man got my breakfast. I sat my tray down. I'm about to eat, and I was like, damn, I forgot my fork. As <laughs> soon as I went over there to get my fork, they coming down the stairs like this. Yeah, time to go. Come on, come <laughs> on. I'm like, I can't eat. Like, I can't even leave that there. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so they, uh, the GM, I forgot, bald head dude. I still want to punch him in his neck. Uh, he was tripping on me, like he had an attitude with me, and I'm like, oh, like, bro, what, what, what's going on, like? He was like, he just, I don't know. He just had an attitude with me or whatever. So I was just like, man, all right, whatever. So I left. I went to go holler at Westoff, the special teams coach. And he's on the phone. And as soon as I walk in, he hands the phone. He's like, hey, can you take these papers down the hall for me? I'm like, all right, cool. You know, <laughs> I'll take them down the hall for you. But I was just like, we well, just want to thank you for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? He was like, wait, give me those back. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and I was like, yeah, they just released me. And he was like, what? He gets on the phone, Westhoff gets on the phone, bro, like, and start naming off a list of players. What about this guy? What about this guy? Y'all need to effort tell me when you guys are making a decision like this. You guys didn't even consult this with me, da 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 da. I'm like, dang, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's West crazy Huff, that yeah. you say that because it's, it's crazy to hear the different reactions of every coach. Every coach. Oh, yeah. And yeah. That process 100%. of like, 
you know that you know you're a good player, and they they show you that just by the by way their they reaction. Feel mm -hmm. When they my DB coach was just yeah. like, oh well, <laughs> yeah. and he was like, well if I see you, shoot, he got a stack full of DBs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got Kamardi and Revis in them. He like, Psh, man, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. You, I wasn't worried about you anyway. <laughs> right, right. So then I went to go holler at Rex, and Rex kind of gave me the rundown. He was like, "Yeah, they're saying you walk around here like you're a ten year vet. You know, you just you don't acknowledge people here in the organization." And I'm like, "Hold on, Rex. First off, I know y'all really don't know me. Me and you never really had much of an interaction, but that is not me. That mm -hmm. is far from me. I'm always talking to people and mm -hmm. walking around like I'm a six year vet. Would you want me to be walking around here acting like a freaking goofball or mm -hmm. something? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really, I'm still getting to know people here, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm like, man, I got production. Like, I'm only averaging six reps of practice. You could look at my production chart. And he was like, yeah, whatever. But I mean, it is what it is. I ended up leaving. And then it's crazy because my boy, we both came from Kansas City to sign with the Jets and we were roommates at the time. And he was telling me how Westoff went off on them boys in the meeting room the next day. Like, man, they just released one of the best players, uh, one of my uh, one of the better players on the special teams. And I would have let at least 25 of y'all go before letting him go. So y'all better get y'all stuff together. I was like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And then even when I went through them, when I signed with Jacksonville, they were like, uh, Westoff was like, hey, we watching you. We mm -hmm. know where you are on the field. He hollered at me for the game, out the game, all that. Like, so it was pretty cool to have that respect from a prominent special teams coach in the league like that you yeah. know and it's tough being a free agent you know on and off and moving around like you said mm -hmm. you know being in that situation i was one of the ones whenever i got released i kind of stayed there yeah you know what i'm saying just it it, it saved mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying started trying to move my stuff back and forth mm -hmm. and things like that um going into that what i into the save your rookie year wouldn't you say that was probably the most time you probably spent the most money you would say easily um just I remember as soon as I made the 53, mm. just, I was like, okay, I, now I need to get a car. Then mm. buying, getting a, getting a spot. I was in San Fran, you know, yeah, it's expensive in that expensive. city. So I didn't initially go in and buy like something like a condo or anything. I, I rented out. And mm. I would say going back, looking back, um, I, I did the smart thing by getting a roommate. Mm -hmm. So we... We actually both both of us ended up making the team. We were like, you know, to save money, we should we should rent out, we should room up together, you know. But that just that that little period, I was spending money on clothes. You know, I got change your wardrobe, yeah, I gotta everything. Get my wardrobe yeah, you right got your season. Yeah. Um, just the car and and the, the new spot. Yeah, that yeah. first that first initial that first initial um, takeoff of me getting into the league was probably that the most I spent. Yeah. Yeah. That's your uh, longest year too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, rookie yeah. years. Man. That it seems like forever. It's yeah. so much. The rookie football. mini camp. Mini camp. OTAs, mini camp. Yeah. And then, then you got the what you don't realize is you training for the combine soon as you get yeah. done with your senior year, depending True. on the team. So True. you going from that that point to all yeah, the way through the your body season. be beat up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I, I pretty much was pretty good with that. Like I did buy my truck, yeah. bought a car. Mm -hmm. I rented, I had an apartment, but Kansas City was super cheap. Mm -hmm. It was like, I was paying literally like seven ninety, seven fifty oh, yeah. a That's month. Low, right? That's low. Two bedroom apartment, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it was it was straight, you know? So that, was, that wasn't bad. I never wanted to play for a California team because I knew how expensive it was. Mm -hmm. California, New York, things like that. I'm glad that I didn't go to no crazy expensive mm -hmm. teams, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when I, when I went to Jets, but that didn't mean much, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't there long enough, but. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in that process, looking back, you know, where you are now, um, what would you feel that you would have done differently going through this process? Um, going through this process now that I've been through it um, is not really worry so much about stuff that you can't control. Um, that goes a long way as far as just your energy every day, the stress level that you put yourself through about stuff that you can't necessarily dictate. Um, if if you focus on just being consistent and being the best person you could be every day, is what I would tell myself, life, anything, just life in general would be a lot easier. You know, more production would come out of that. Um, I think it took me going through some experience to really learn that though. Um, if mm -hmm. I could go back if from the people that, cause you know, I had, 
I was blessed with a lot of people, you know, in my corner like yourselves mm -hmm. and my pops, um, just to give me advice and like insight. If you could learn or if you can grasp what they telling you before you actually got to go through mm -hmm. it, that's a big thing for me. Yeah. Need that support system, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Big, you know. I like I have my pops, my uncle, you know, and then I had a good core group of people mm -hmm. around me that that cared about right. me as an individual, cared about what I did, how I did it, you know what I'm saying? Just even being out with just with some of my homeboys and they like, man, listen, you got this going on. You need to go home. Right. We we'll handle this. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like that's why I respect and have the love have the respect and the love for my boys today. Because mm -hmm. they, they appreciate they seen that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and see what it is. And that's that's huge. Um Another question I will have for you is it's how what's your off season regimen like? Well, people don't understand what it takes, you know, to because it's it's hard to get into the league. Mm -hmm. But what is your regimen to take care of your body, your training, and everything to stay there? It took me until year three to really get down a good schedule for me, but um, now it's. I really emphasize trying to make sure that I get full range of motion. So I do a lot of corrective lifts. I don't necessarily do like overboard heavy lifting, but mm -hmm. I do a lot of reps to, to get my strength up because strength is mm -hmm. goes a long way. Um, but really now I'm I'm really on I, I I'm a big fan of Kobe. So mm -hmm. I, I started doing three workouts a day. So I train at four thirty. Um that's really more like corrective stuff. I try to pair all my workouts together. So I do like lifting in the morning and then I'll run afterwards. And after the run, I'll do some football stuff. Um, but I really don't start getting on the field until I would say in right now. Right now is when I'm starting to really get back on the field. Mm -hmm. But I start my training and stuff, start actually training in, after the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's when I start. But okay. I try to get three workouts in a day have an off day in the middle of the week, take the weekend off, and stay consistent with that. Well, what would you say is your your biggest thing? Like, what do you do for, or what, what, to keep your speed? Because you, mm -hmm. you quick, you mm -hmm. fast, you know what I'm saying? What is your biggest things to maintain your speed? Um, I run track. Mm -hmm. I, I Track, for me, helps me because of the stamina, the speed endurance that you need in track. Mm -hmm. In a football game, you're running and you're taking a break. Yeah. But you got to be full speed every play. Yeah. You know, so if you can create that base, that foundation, um, which is the mindset I take in the track, look, I'm, I'm going to come out here and compete with, with some guys that are elite speed. Yeah. That's going to create that turnover that I need mm -hmm. and that base that I need to come in for camp and, and be ready. Because um, you see, like, Camp is about staying healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, you you got to stay healthy. Making the camp too. Yeah. Staying healthy. You got to be available. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, hey, available. You, you, you're a fast ability. dude too, Terrell. <laughs> what, what did you do for to maintain? Like how you you kept your speed? Uh, similar, similar. Just a lot of track. Uh, a lot of track workouts. Cause I mean, he hit the nail on the head when he said speed endurance. That's key. Cause mm -hmm. uh, I could I could tell you from experience, track shape. Make football so much easier. Way easier. Way easier. It goes hand in hand. Because yeah. what people don't realize, especially like with us, we play on the back end. We chasing receivers like him mm -hmm. down the field. They might run a fade down the road. He might just be running you off, though, and it's a sweep across the other way. You right. got to put your foot in the dirt and, go. and be on the last man angle trying to pursue to the you ball. You know it's crazy? He, That's get like to go, a he get to go out the next play. <laughs> Yeah, right. somebody else yeah. Coming. we stay in, yeah, right. we stay we in, and we play special teams, right? right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, that, like that's yeah. Like I remember my junior year, I never forget. We're playing in the big house, and I'm covering Mario Manningham. He had torched me the year before. He took got me for like two tubs, but um, I'm a gunner on punt, and I'm a jammer on punt return. We went three and out three times in a row, and then we went three and out on offense, offense. three times Ooh. in a row. Mm -hmm. So I'm covering that kick. I I cover him for four for three to four plays, and then I got to run up, run down this field, and cover this kick. And that happened like three. So that's and like, every coach will tell you, don't put nothing bad on tape. Yes, don't put nothing bad exactly. on tape. Man, exactly. Exactly. And when you tired like that, 
that still you still got to go out there and perform at your highest level. So. Yeah, I would have never survived if it wasn't for those uh, track workouts. That speed endurance is key. It does so much for your anaerobic threshold and what you can endure. But I would say personally, like you got to know yourself too. Like, got to understand your body. You got to understand. Look, am I a fast guy or am I a big guy that that's gonna you know cut somebody off with my body and go up and make the play? So I know a lot of guys that you know track might not work for them, but they might do you know Pilates or they might go do boxing or they mm -hmm. might go play basketball, um, especially for a receiver. Um, you see guys like Devontae Adams, Keenan, Keenan Allen. Um, their releases are so similar to crossing crossing over mm -hmm. in basketball. So really it's it's about I would say as a veteran, it's about finding what works for you. Because mm -hmm. when you get when you get into the, the process of trying to, you know, go and look and see what the next guy did, that not might not necessarily help you in the long run. You right. Know? See me, I wasn't the fastest dude. Yeah. And the biggest thing that helped me and separated me was my technique. Yeah. I had closing speed, but I didn't have that. Uh, didn't sustain a long mm -hmm. distance speed, right? Mm -hmm. um, more of a distant runner than a sprinter. Mm -hmm. But see, what separated me for a lot of people was getting in and out of my breaks, right. my transition. Right. Like it was, it was flawless. Right. You know, in, in a way. Um, and so that that helped me big time. Mm -hmm. And I pride on that because I wasn't the fastest. And it wasn't that I didn't have confidence in my speed. I just knew my limits. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that helped me major when I did guard a faster dude, when I did guard a bigger dude, you know, I just knew how to gauge it and just play it. So I was able to run with those guys who was running four threes and four fours when I ran a four six. <laughs> I didn't tell nobody mm -hmm. else, but <laughs> you know, but that's that's just part of the process, right? Yeah. Man, how being it being in being a uh, young dude, yeah. you know, being in you know the NFL, you fresh out of college, you still got those, you know, relationships with people there mm -hmm. as far as like you know, friends and, and associates and stuff like that, and all that carries with you. Your your following carries with you. You get you maintain a new following. You in a new team. How is that process maintaining a relationship? That process is tough, um, for sure. Um, just really, especially what people don't realize, like you're traveling all around too. And if you're in a relationship, depending on y'all dynamic, y'all don't necessarily travel with each other. Right. So the distance creates a factor. Then you, like you said, you got everybody coming at you too at the yeah, same time. Yeah, a lot time. of tension. So, I was a mess. Man. I yeah, was a full blown I, mess. Man. So. I would say, <laughs> for sure, it's tough. It's a tough thing, and with social media now, oh, yeah, it's, it's even worse. It's, it's, it's even, even worse. Yeah, Didn't have it like that then. Yeah, man. So I would say, do what works for you, and that that process is going to be a process like anything else. Um, yeah, it's going to take some growing pains, and it's going to take some maturity and some some growth there that you're going to need. That you know. And in the long run, it's going to help you. You know what well, I mean? What advice would you give uh, a young athlete in your um, situation, them trying to work on a relationship or be, be, they're in a relationship right now that's they fresh out of college, they're trying to work something through? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what would you, what, what advice would you give? What advice would I give a young man trying to build on a relationship? I would say, you know, with that process, find somebody that works for you. Um, in in anything, you want to have a partner that is gonna enhance what you got going on. And a lot of the times, um, you kind of get in between to where it feels like you know because your job is so grand, it's so put on a pedestal that you might that ego starts to come in. Mm -hmm. And I would say. Um, it's really big for you. You're gonna see a lot of growth if you if you try to put that ego aside and and grow with this person and and make sure that this person feels important equally needed. Yeah, equally. Okay, I'm gonna touch on that because when we, you we, when you say ego, because some people may be dealing with ego, yeah. and I agree with you on that. Yeah. But then also some people is dealing with that added stress because yeah. of you getting cussed out every day mm -hmm. at work. Mm -hmm. You worried about if you're gonna be there the next mm -hmm. day. 
you know, you constantly trying to get some, especially when you're a younger guy, you're they coaching you the hardest. Yeah. Especially when you got a lot of vets in the and, room or whatever. And another thing that we don't we haven't talked about is that that little guy in the back of your head is this person with me just for what I can bring to the table. Absolutely. You know what yeah. I mean? And absolutely that that goes into it too. Um it really I would say find somebody that you could come in and feel like if everything was put aside would you would we still have something you know would we be would we be the the partnership and would we be able to grow something yeah. because with anything you got to be able to commit to it and you know with the hardships you got to be able to buy into this look i'm going to be in this together and we're going to build up together yeah yeah no, I, I i yeah i was going to say um one thing that i would have told myself yeah. is uh Make sure you don't 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 confuse uh, having stuff in common with somebody versus actually being compatible. Because mm -hmm. when you're with somebody that's compatible, that's going to be the person that's going to wherever you're lacking. Right. That's where they're going to that's where they're going to enhance you at. Right. Specifically on those points, and that's right. what you need. You know that's what, what makes you whole. That is true. You know what I'd have told myself. Stop making every last one of them feel like they were the one. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Can't be sad. Are your sad dreams, man? Boy, I, that, that, that was the young boy problem of mine. You know, I was, hey, I was living life. Hey, I was, enjoying I was in love at times. I, 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 <laughs> looking for love in all the wrong places. Right. <laughs> but no, nah, it's, you know, it, it, it that does. Because when you do stuff like that, though, too, well, we don't realize because how... Just looking at my experience, you're putting a lot of energy into something else mm -hmm. and others. You know what I'm saying? And that's creating a lot of distraction. And it's ultimately taken away from your main goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you come home from work. You get on the phone. Cool conversation. Come through, chill. And then you have those days just like... Da, 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 da. Now you're dealing with that. And you're dealing with, da, 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 with another one, whatever. So you're creating this distraction on you. And it's added more stress, whether we think so or not. Yeah. It adds more stress to your situation. And it ultimately takes away from what you're doing there. With your whole main purpose there, being at work, right? To, 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 to take your game to another level. Because it's easy to get caught up in, you know, all right, I'm come out. We, I'm out every weekend. I'm getting that attention every weekend, you know. And that being up late, you know, what you got, you plan on Sunday, so Mondays is cracking. You off on Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? And then now, now you're really putting a lot of messed up stuff on your body mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because you we gonna find a way like shoot even if we're well, with fast friday so you're gonna step out probably thursday mm -hmm. you know you ain't doing nothing on friday mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so like there, there's there's things that we were doing create more distraction when we could have been putting that extra time into our craft our bodies our playbook mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. and i kind of look back on that it's like damn i was doing way much mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. i'm going in the film study the next day after a sunday game like shee. only only experience to teach you that all those things that you just mentioned like that's nutrition yeah. that's that that's food whether it's mental whether it's spiritual or actual food that you eat like people like my one of my mentors always ask me all the time like you know how's your diet but he not just talking about like what I'm physically like eating. He talking about like what am I putting in my head? Like who's around you? What do you surround yourself with? What type of activities are you engaging in? All that is food. So when you giving yourself bad nutrition, it's gonna manifest in some shape or uh, some shape or fashion. So you gotta be mindful of that, definitely. Yeah, that's 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 a crazy situation. You gotta, you got, you gotta, you gotta take care of your body, man. And that's the biggest thing. And like you said, man, you you gotta be present and know your ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now that you have, what's what's your plans? Now you got this chance. You you you're with um, San Francisco coming out mm -hmm. out of Oregon, <clears throat> weak ass state, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> went to San Fran, Buffalo. You had a yeah. short stand in Buffalo as well. Yeah. And now you have another opportunity in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is your mindset 
your approach, you know, going through this off season right now, I know they're, they're having free agency, haven't hit, there's no free agency sign, excuse me, no free agency signings. There's been no draft picks mm -hmm. right now based off what they have on their roster right now. They made some changes with their quarterback, mm -hmm. you know. What is your mindset going in, and how are you 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 setting yourself up to have a successful, to put yourself in a successful situation? I was going to ask you too. Um, does this are you out of practice squad eligibility? Uh, no, I still have. Some. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, but that that's a really good question because you know going in the last couple weeks of last year and not getting the opportunity to, to play. And being on the practice squad, like you said, um, you really, I was really thinking like, yo, I got this, this next off season has to be my best off season because I don't, I'm not a guy that wants to practice. I don't practice for a living. I mm -hmm. want to play, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I know what I bring to the table and I know that, you know, I can help a team. So um, this off season for me was just, like I said earlier, was really just trying to focus on everything that I can control and what I control is being the best athlete that I can be. So I'm just approaching every workout um, as opportunity to get better. Um, just like um, really emphasizing the fact that we can't take every rep for granted because mm -hmm. you don't know when your last rep is going to be. Absolutely. So just, just really going out there and taking advantage of every rep this offseason to go out to be ready for camp and be the best athlete that I can be. To present to them to show them look this is this is what i can do to help this team um like you said we have new coaches so it's going to be a clean slate for everybody everybody's mm -hmm. going in on the same level even playing field so um the opportunities are there um and i think the guys that are, that are going to stick are the guys that are going to be willing to acclimate themselves into the culture yeah. and 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 really wanting to be a part of that process of uh changing a culture from what it was to something that it can be, mm -hmm. you know? So really just trying to approach every day like it's my last and making sure that I'm, like you said, being mentally prepared just as much as I'm physically physically prepared is key, I think. And yeah, because you're going to get a whole new playbook. Right. You got a whole different quarterbacks coming right. in. You got to you gotta put in that. That time is very vital, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you got to understand now, because this is what I was told, and they kept when I when I Jacksonville released me the last year and it, it was after the lockout yeah. contract went up money was up yeah. and everything and that was their whole thing they mm -hmm. they loved me over there like I had a great rapport with them over there mm -hmm. you know it's after my third year up there and it was just like hey um, it's gonna be hard to get on another team with you right now you've been a vested player mm -hmm. and you're a free agent and then you also been released now four times. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're going to look at, mm -hmm. you know. I remember when I, when I signed back with Kansas City and then they released me after the next game and then I went to go uh, work out with the Colts and they were like, what happened? I'm like, man, quit asking me what happened. Mm -hmm. They kept asking me what happened. Like, you, dude, I don't know. Yeah. And I literally was on the streets for eight weeks, bro. They brought me back. I ended up starting, like, I played special teams in and out on the first half. Ended up starting the second half. Came in, had like six tackles, five solos, a forced fumble to seal the deal to win the game. Jamal Charles, it's your fault that I got released on this, dog. <laughs> but we, 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 he gets, we get the ball back. We seal the deal, bro. Made Buddy fumble. My boy Turk recovered it. You know what I'm saying? Offense get the ball inside the five. Jamal Charles fumble. Tampa Bay gets the ball back. They go in the score. We go to overtime and lose. Boom. I get a call that next Tuesday, that Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hold up, homie. Mm -hmm. Like, this can't, and a pass breakup. Yeah. Like, well, this can't be happening, man. I was just on the street for nine weeks and I came in here ready. Yeah. Ready. But see, it, it, it's like you said, sometimes we don't have that control, no. right? No. And, and, and you, you, you never know when it's going to be your last game, your, yeah. your last play, whatever. And that leads me to ask you this. I know you're playing right now. Your mind is in the midst of playing ball. Because mm -hmm. I used to hate what people ask me this. What's your plan What next? is plan after yeah, life of football? For sure. Because that transition is very tough. Mm -hmm. I know you know the transition of just being out and thinking about it. Yeah. But when you know it's not there for you anymore, yeah. what's your plan? Because that, that's a tough transition. Um, that actually 
has changed over the last couple of years. Um, initially, I wanted to open up my own sports performance facility. Um, but now that um, I'm kind of just getting older, um, I think my passion is youth and kids and giving back. And I think coaching would be like probably the best opportunity for me, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, so I think coaching is probably the next step for me. But um, like you said, you, with your process, uh, this being my next camp coming up, and I'm kind of in that same boat where it's like this is my third team, I would much rather go out balling yeah. than coming up there and being – kind of like worried about everything that's going on and then when I get my opportunity not take advantage of it so mm -hmm. um I don't necessarily think about what's next like you said because but that's the reality that's the reality um but I would say going out going out with how I want to go out is the ultimate goal I was blessed enough to be able to go out yeah on my terms and yeah. just say you know I'm done yeah Cause I usually come home, chill for about a few weeks, and then get to working out. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Yeah, I'm done. I'm mm -mm. I hear I that. Mine, mine, do no more. Was, mine was abrupt. Mine yeah, was man. abrupt. Yeah, I actually went full circle because my first team was Frisco too. I went from there to Indianapolis to the Rams in St. Louis, Miami, New Orleans, and then Oakland. Um, if I, I think if they would have kept. Hugh Jackson, I would have had a chance to make that 53. Mm -hmm. But when they brought in Dennis Allen as the head coach, one of his things was uh, he didn't like small corners. Because I had actually got cut before the last preseason game. And then my boy, who actually made the 53, they cut him a week later. And he was like, he, he, he like pressed him about it. He was like, hey, why, how come I'm not making this team? Mm -hmm. And he says, I want corners that are six foot and over 200 pounds. Yeah, that that kind of goes back to that thing where it's it's so much that's not in your control. Yeah, but, uh, man, for sure. Yeah, that free agent life ain't no joke, man. Nah, you living out of a suitcase. I I never I never was in a situation where because I was I had all practice squads years and all every time with me, I would start off it would be like nine deep in the depth chart and I work my way up to like battling for that third or fourth spot where basically you're an alternate on defense and you and you like at least two deep on the special teams. Yeah. That's the worst, man. I always yeah, started yeah. on all special teams, but like being in like third, fourth group and always rotating or ended up starting mm -hmm. with me. And then next year I'm back down on the thing and yeah. always work my way up. So that was always my process. Yeah. I would yeah. say that, <coughs> excuse me, that's the hardest probably mentally is working your way up and yeah, then having right. to start that process all, all the way over, over again. again. That, that, that builds character, man. Yeah. It definitely does. Because once you hit that real world, mm -hmm. you're going to have to use that same mentality. Yeah. But you're going to have to dig deep from a different part in your mindset, in your body, your, in, your, in your spirit. Because you're not doing something that you're passionate about anymore right we grew up playing this game and this is what we know mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're That's not true. doing that anymore Very right true. Yeah. so now when you get into that transition into that that life of when you feel like you got to work your way back up it's a completely different grind it's a completely different mindset because yeah. you're not chasing something that you truly love mm -hmm. you're trying to chase something you're trying to find that love right you're trying to get that fix again mm -hmm. and anything that you try you're not going to have that fix mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it, it's not going to be there and then there's going to be times where you just you're you're going to feel like man i am not shit right now mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like and you're going to need that support system you're going to have to be around people that's that's gonna um, gonna help you out. You're gonna have to take advantage of these NFL programs that they have. If you want to get into boot camp, mm -hmm. uh, you know TV boot camp. Yeah. You want to get coaching and stuff like that. Whatever field they have it for you, take advantage of that. And that's something I didn't do. Right. You know. But like, or oh, after the fact, yeah. But I already kind of knew what I wanted to do. But mm -hmm. then I got to play, play Canada. But still, take advantage of those programs because they have it for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and that way you put yourself in the right position for that you know what yeah. i mean because it's a tough battle man it's a tough <coughs> battle. and then another thing is it's like when you're working for somebody mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to, and then it's like, hold on, man. Yeah. Listen, like, look. I can only imagine. You know, so it's, it's, oh, it's a lot it, of it puts you in a different mindset. You know what I'm saying? And then you see the people like you're working with, and it's just like they're just there to be there, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. Like, it's not everybody has that same grind and mindset and right. determination as you. And so now when you get into that mindset or get into that, the corporate world, mm -hmm. you're going to have to find a different, you're going to have to find that same mentality. Mm -hmm but from a different space in your yeah. life, you know, yeah. a different space in your body and your mindset. And, and my thing is this, I can't be personal or whatever, but how are you setting yourself up financially for life after football? Um, I would say really what helped me um, was the fact that I have a support system. So in the off season, I've been able to save by not having to rent out. I'm just going back home and, and living with my parents <coughs> just to save some money. Um, and investing in the stock market, I, I have been doing, but uh, I haven't been making any, like, um, I would say high risk investments mm -hmm. and staying away from high risk investments and really, um, not trying to build up as much liabilities like cars. Like mm -hmm. I only bought one car coming out, um, my rookie year, that's probably the most I spent, but trying to stay away from liabilities and gain more assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. is what I'm trying to do. So the biggest thing, have you ever thought about like your long-term retirement goals? Yeah. Yeah. So, so like starting now with different, there's different long-term, yeah. uh, like, you know, different engines that you can, you know, place your money mm -hmm. to gain a better rate of return. Yeah. I, I've been thinking about it. I like, I've been actually, I recently talked to somebody about life insurance, um, um, I actually created an account for my son, um, his uh, 507, I believe it's called, it's, for his, mm -hmm. for, uh, it's like an account to build up. Oh, your 529. 529, yeah, yeah so that and, um, but yeah, like long-term 401k, um, I've been trying to, uh, you know, they take so much out of our game checks every week mm -hmm. and put it into that. Yeah, um, so you, yeah, you put it into your NFL pension and stuff yeah, like that. But, yeah, but. Um, that's good. I haven't invested or bought any property yet, and that's probably the next step I want to do is, is for as far as that Have goes. you ever thought about creating your own personal, like, uh, long-term retirement engine? So, like, you know, you have those, your, your Roth IRAs and things like that. I have you ever thought about doing that? I haven't. I haven't got a chance to do that yet. So, so that's probably the next thing I need to get on. That, absolutely. Yeah. You would be amazed. And I, I spoke upon this on last show, but just what two hundred dollars a month could do mm -hmm. for you—that's fifty bucks a week. Mm -hmm. Each each weekend, we spend more than fifty dollars, right? Easily. So Easily. Just thinking about that, you put away two hundred bucks a month, you know, and a nice. Think about. Have you heard of the rule of seventy-two? Mm -mm. No. No. So the rule of seventy-two is compounding interest, mm -hmm. right? And you want to be able to put your money in a long-term investment, long-term mm -hmm. engine, to where. That you're going to get a rate, a greater rate of return. Right. You want your money to compound in interest. Yeah. You know. Work you, money, make the money work for you. You want to make your money work for you. It's that compound in interest. So if you put your money in a, in a, and in, in, in a something that's but just say for three percent or something like that, it's going to take you a lot longer for your money to double. It could mm -hmm. take you, it'll take you about what a three percent. You can say about every twenty four years mm -hmm. for your money to double. Mm -hmm. You do something anywhere around nine, twelve percent, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, with like like higher rate of returns, right? With mm -hmm. a higher rate of return, your money is going to double like every six to seven years. Wow! Right? Yeah. So you got to find things out there like that that can put you in that situation. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Please, um, please. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like we got to like now that you're younger, you know what I'm saying. I'm telling you, you consistently just do that. Just even just like I said, some small amount, two hundred a month. I'm telling you, by the time you retire, man, you're gonna be sitting real nice. Mm -hmm. Little man is gonna be sitting real nice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it's good. Yes, you need to. Now you need to get life insurance. Yeah. You you're 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 taking care of your family. Your son needs to have life insurance. Mm -hmm. Your lady needs to have life insurance. That's very important because again, God forbid something was to happen to you. 
that money that you're bringing in for your family is no longer. Yeah. So life insurance is not simply, oh, we, we just get money just in case we know we die. No, it's protecting your income. Mm -hmm. You know, you want your family to sustain the same lifestyle as when you was here when you're gone. Right. Because that's why you're working hard. And we always talking about generational wealth. Well, that's the first step to create generational wealth. Mm -hmm. You're purchasing wealth already. Yeah. That's what your life insurance is, right? Mm -hmm. That's your income protection. You're protecting your income. You're purchasing wealth, right? So anything that happens to you, now your, your son has his trust. He's going to be able to go to college. You already got his, uh, his UGMA plan going on, his mm -hmm. 529, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have that going. So no, that, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty, you need that. That's very important. You said, do you, you have life insurance or not? I'm about to. Okay. I, I've, been, I've been talking to somebody about it and I haven't pulled the trigger on a specific plan yet. I haven't decided well, on how I, I want to do it. I got a great plan for you. For sure. A great so, plan. So I'm telling you. The other thing I would say is uh, you could do it like just with small things too, as far as like building generational wealth. It all starts with habits, like just small things. Like every, we always talk about things like financial literacy. The best way to get the ball moving is just start small. Like one of the things I always did, especially with me, because I wasn't fortunate enough to make a 53. I was always on practice squad, bouncing from team to team. So what I would do was, man, you in that facility, they making them, them, uh, them, you know, gourmet meals, man, take it to go plate. Yep. Don't spend yeah, no, yeah, don't yeah, spend I no. I used to be on that. Yeah, I was like, like, it's, I, it's was like, too, I would bro. see dudes go out to like Ruth Chris and all, all the these time. other places. Yeah, and I'd be like, y'all nuts. That. Like they just made like, like it ain't like we eating grilled cheese sandwiches. Like they just made like a whole lobster prime right. rib. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna take like they got to go place there. Take it home. But uh, one of the one of the best things that happened to me though, and why I was able to stay afloat, because I I was able to sustain like a living. Because I did the same as you. I, I came back home, but I was I, I was hitting my mom off with rent as well, just to help out. But um. One of the things that helped me my rookie year in Frisco, um, at that time, Alan Rossum was one of the guys in that DB. It was a veteran group. It had him, OG Mike Lewis that played in Philly with B-Dog, and uh, uh, Walt Harris was there. He ended up getting hurt. Uh, Deshaun Golson, a bunch of them. T-Bug, you know. everybody, Sh uh, Shante Spencer, all of them. And uh, Alan Rossum, him being a Notre Dame alum like myself, he kind of like pulled me to the side. The first conversation he had with me, my locker was right next to his, and he points at Crabtree, walked in. Crabtree just signed. I think he signed for like, I think like 15 or 20 million or something like that. Yeah, you got guaranteed. some good dude, Lord. So he walk in for our first round pick, my, uh, my same draft class as me. Here I am, this free agent. And Alan was like, hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm like, all right. So I'm listening. He said, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to shine on you or nothing, nothing like that. I'm just telling you what it is. What you make this month, he gonna blow off tonight. I guarantee you. And he was like, you can't do what he do. You can't right. hang out with those people. Do not try to live like everybody you else. Can't, he can't was do like, it. don't do it. And he was like, you take your ass over there to that extended stage mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you get cut, right. He was like, look at your situation. He was just like, I'm just telling you, the reality is you're probably not going to make this team. He was like, I want you to make it. Don't get me wrong. That's the wrong mentality to have. But there's eight, guy, there's, there's eight guys in front of you. All of them is veterans. Most of them getting paid long-term contracts. Just numbers-wise, it don't make sense. It's not in your favor. He's like, so wherever you go, until you get into a situation where you could work yourself into that too deep rotation, for sure, and you got a legitimate shot. Know who you are. You gotta, you gotta stay in your lane, stay in your financial lane, and that actually yeah. was the greatest advice I ever got. Cause I, um, my my financial number for me for an annual year of expenses was roughly like twelve thousand five hundred something, and I would save all my game checks and uh, set that to the side. So like. If I ever get released, I know all my bills is taken care of for at least one year. I did that every year. That was the best advice he ever gave me. That's true. I was in a room with Ty Law, Pastor Tan, mm. Greg uh, Wesley. Mm. Them dudes was Guys. breaking bread. Guys. Stupid that, bread. What? I don't want to know what Ricky Knight was like. Boy, uh, got I was the only rookie though. Uh, I was the only free agent rookie. Uh, only the only dude they brought in, and then they later on brought another dude and another rookie. But 
Man, I was the only one. See, I got while. I got lucky my rookie year. We had three of three of us. Two of us was undrafted, but then I, we had a drafted guy. They they kind of you know went it easy on us. Yeah. So yeah, I, they they was easy on me. Yeah. I remember uh, they was going. We, I think we was in Indy, and we was going to Morton's. And they like, Rook, come on, we're about to go eat. I'm like, I ain't going with y'all. Right. He's like, man, I was like, man, right. we ain't going to get you, man. I'm like, man, I ain't going with y'all. He said, man, you coming with us. I was like, man. <laughs> they got me. They, they, yeah, I had to drop. He said, you getting game checks. I had to drop 1200 bro. That oh. job still hurt me. I'm like, mm. he said, you getting game checks. You about to get paid tomorrow. You can push 1200 on mm-hmm. this. That bill was like 14 Jeez. 14 Gs there, man. And he was like, you put 1200 on it. We ain't, we ain't get you like we could have got you, Rook. Right, I was right. Like, man, the craziest right. thing I seen, well, not seen, I heard about it, was uh, one of them boys in Oakland told me uh, Huff blew like 50 racks at uh, at Live. Yo. Sending bottles back and forth with Chris Brown. Chris Brown sent him like 50 bottles of uh, Magic Aces. He whispered in some girl's ear, she left, came back. They had the girl in the life-size martini glass with the two, the big boy magic aces with the sparklies in them. Yeah, I've been in the club and with some dudes that live. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. dropping 30, 40 oh, yeah. bands. I'm yeah. like, I'm yeah. tripping. Bro, yeah, not y'all playing. tripping. Y'all I can't, you can't, you can't can do it. You can't be me, huh? You can for my whole car, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. But hey, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Yeah. It's Beyond the Breaks and the words of Stephen A. Smith. It's my house. <laughs> you always welcome. <laughs> we hear that. <laughs>